Hey everybody, and welcome to another G Power 3.1 tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you very briefly about um, a test that I've done previously, and I was looking through G Power, and I realized that it was available uh, just in case it's something that you want to do. So the test that I'm talking about, the analysis test that I'm talking about, is called a Fisher Z test, and this is where you take, uh, where you um, essentially see whether or not two independent Pearson's R correlation values are significantly different from one another and you you do a Z test and so how we do this is we go into test family and we choose the test and in the statistical test uh, drop down right here you can see that there are a few correlations here this is what we're going to do for uh, a Fisher's Z test two independent Pearson's R's so we choose that and of course we're going to keep a priori here uh, given you know various things you know given alpha power and effect size and um it's, it's rather simple. It's a rather simple test. And so let's work down this. Of course, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I do like using um, two-tailed tests. They're more conservative. Um, and now we have effect size Q. We are going to hover over here. Q is the effect size, I guess, uh, estimate symbol. And uh, we have some conventions for Q. Seemingly looks like uh, are the same exact conventions for R, which is fine. Uh, and so all we really need to do to figure out our effect size Q is put in our two correlation coefficients that we already are familiar with from previous research, from a previous analysis that we've done. This is what we um, will put in here to figure out our effect size. And I think this is really good, too, as a quick calculator for an effect size of a Fisher's Z test. So correlation coefficient um, R1. So that's the first one that we would use to compare. And then our R2, which is the second one that we would compare. Right. And so we would just put those values in. Now, um, by default, these values are 0.3 and 0.5. And of course, you can see here that in dark mode, uh, apologies here, effect size Q is 0.6. OK, so and, and I got to say that this is not an effect size. This is a difference value, not a correlation value. So it's not saying that the uh, it's not saying that the effect size is a magnitude 0 0.60. No, no, that's not what it's uh, referring to there. It's, it's, a, it's a it's a comparison ratio, kind of like Cohen's D. So correlation coefficient one, we can we'll, we'll just go ahead and leave these two values here and then click calculate. And you can see that there is a negative. And the reason why there's a negative is because the R1 is smaller than the R2. Now, if we switch them, it would be a positive value. So let me show you that 0.5 and 0.3. And if we calculate that effect size, you can see that it's the same exact number, just positive. OK, so we are going to um, transfer to the main window and we're going to close this drawer. Our uh, alpha is going to stay the default 0 0.05. Our power, as we've been doing in all of these videos, is changed from 0.95 to 0.8. And our allocation ratio, that is, uh, our allocation ratio is um, the sample sizes and how we plan to uh, have two similar sample sizes here. So that is saying that we plan to have equal groups because N2 divided by N1, we want that to be one. So, you know, if you have a situation where you're going to end up with, um, we're going to end up with unequal groups just because it's easier to measure one of your your correlation uh, values versus the other correlation value, then you would change this allocation. But for all intents and purposes, it's best to keep them equal. So we're going to leave that as one. And then all we have to do is hit on calculate here. And it will tell us that if we want to find this a small to medium effect size, closer to medium of 0.24, we'll say, that it looks like we're going to need about 554. And the great thing about this is since it knows that it's two different independent groups, that it gives us that, that number and it divides it by two for us. So 277 per group. And if you want slightly more power, you could just say, all right, well, I'll either... Uh, I'll either increase that to 280 or we'll just do 300 or something like that. So you at least overshoot it and you'll end up with at least 0.8 power. And if you, uh, you know, increase that to 600 and each 300 each, then you'll have a greater power looking for this particular effect size. But I will change one thing here. And let's say we are looking for an effect that is only 0.01. If we if we we calculate this, you can see that the amount of people that we need is significantly greater, like meaningfully greater. So instead of 600 people, approximately, we now need 3000 people, um, 1500 people per group, just to detect a tiny little difference between two independent correlations. Uh, that's how accelerated the sample size gets. If you want to have a good powered study, you know, you got to you got to ramp it up the smaller the effect. 
and, and you've, we've seen this it's in some of the other uh, test families as well. But for Z-Tests, it's quite a bit uh, more impactful because of that acceleration. We, we only changed, uh, what, 0.14, a difference of 0.14 effect size. That has significant uh, impacts on the sample size. So that's how you do a um, Fisher Z-Test a priori power analysis in G-Power. If you have any uh, comments, suggestions, and feedback, please leave that down below. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. If you like this content, consider subscribing for more of these kinds of tutorials. Thank you for watching.